Chapter 22 along the corridor. Well, 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 sighed Mr Willy Wonka, two naughty little children gone, three good little children left. I think we'd better get out of this room quickly before we lose anyone else. But Mr Wonka, said Charlie Bucket anxiously, will Violet Beauregard ever be all right again or, or will show us the blueberry? They'll deduce her in no time flat, declared Mr Wonka. They'll roll her in the deducing machine and she'll come out just as thin as a whistle. But will she still be blue all over, asked Charlie. She'll be purple, cried Mr Wonka. A fine, rich purple from head to toe. Well, there you are. That's what comes from chewing disgusting gum all day long. If you think so, is gum is so disgusting, said Mike TV, then why did you make it a new factory? I do wish you wouldn't mumble, said Mr Wonka. I can't hear a word you're saying. Come on, off we go. Hurry up, follow me. We're going into the corridors again. And so saying, Mr Wonka scuttled across to the far end of the inventing room and went out through a small secret door hidden behind a lot of pipes and stoves. The three remaining children, Veruca Salt, Mike TV and Charlie Bucket, together with the five remaining grown-ups, followed after him. Charlie Bucket saw that they were now back in one of those long pink corridors with many other pink corridors leading out of it. Mr Wonka was rushing along in front, turning left and right and right and left, and Grandpa Joe was saying, Keep good hold my hand, Charlie. It would be terrible to get lost in here, Mr Wonka was saying. No time for any more messing about. We'll never get anywhere at the rate we've been going. And on he rushed down the endless pink corridors with the black top hat perched on top of his head and his plum-coloured velvet coattails flying out behind him like a flag in the wind. They passed a door in the wall. No time to go in, shouted Mr Wonka. Press on, press on. They passed another door. And then another and another. There were doors every 20 paces or so along the corridor now. And they all had something written on them. Strange clanking noises were coming from behind several of them. And delicious smells wafting through the keyholes. And sometimes little jets of coloured stream shot out from the cracks underneath. Grandpa Joe and Charlie were half running and half walking to keep up with Mr Wonka. But they were able to read what it said on quite a few of the doors as they hurried by. Eatable marshmallow pillows, it said on one. Marshmallow pillows are terrific, shouted Mr Wonka as he dashed by. They'll be all the rage when I get them in the shops. No time to go in, though, no time to go in. Lickable wallpaper for nurseries, it said on the next door. Lovely stuff, lickable wallpaper, cried Mr Wonka, rushing past. It has pictures of fruit on it, bananas, apples, oranges, grapes, pineapples, strawberries and snozberries. Snozberries, said Mike TV. Don't interrupt, said Mr Wonka. The wallpaper has pictures of all these fruits printed on. And when you lick the picture of a banana, it tastes of a banana. When you lick the picture of a strawberry, it tastes of a strawberry. And when you lick a snozberry, it tastes just like a snozberry. And what does a snozberry taste like? You're mumbling again, said Mr Wonka. Speak louder next time. On we go. Hurry up. Hot ice creams for cold days, it said on the next door. Extremely useful in winter, said Mr Wonka. Rushing on. Hot ice cream warms you up no end in freezing weather. I also make hot ice cubes for putting in hot drinks. Hot ice cubes make drinks hotter. Oops. Cows that give chocolate milk, it said on the next door. Oh, my pretty little cows, cried Mr Wonka. How I love those cows. Why can't we see them, asked Veruca Salt. Why do we have to go rushing past all these lovely rooms? We can stop. We shall stop in time, called out Mr Wonka. Don't be so madly impatient. Fizzy lifting drinks, it said on the next door. Oh, these are fabulous, cried Mr Wonka. They fill you with bubbles. The bubbles are a special kind of gas. And this gas is so terrifically lifting that it lifts you right off the ground, just like a balloon. And you go up until your head hits the ceiling and there you stay. How do you come down again? asked little Charlie. You do a burp, of course, said Mr Wonka. You do a great, big, long, rude burp. And up comes the gas and down comes you. But don't drink it outdoors. There's no knowing how high you'll be carried if you do that. I gave some to an old umpa once in the backyard and he went up and disappeared out of sight. It was very sad. I never saw him again. He should have burped, Charlie said. Of course he should have burped, said Mr Wonka. I stood there shouting, burp, you silly ass, burp, or you'll never come down again. But he didn't, or couldn't, or wouldn't. I don't know which, maybe he was too polite. He must be on the moon now. On the next door it said, square sweets that look round. Wait, cried Mr Wonka, skidding suddenly to a halt. I'm very proud of my square seats, sweets that look round. Let's take a peek. <laughs>